Ready? Okay. All right, so, wow. I got about 60 hits on the walkumentary, which I wasn't expecting to be actually as bad as it was. Trouble is, I got down there, I wasn't really feeling it, and my the, the guy I brought with me was making it worse because he just wanted to bail, and he wasn't... You know, he's my roadie. He he was there on and off. He was like a part-time roadie. Roadie for one band, then he didn't. Then he would, then he wouldn't. Then he would, you know, because he was doing his thing, his own thing. But when he got the chance, he would go down and do all this stuff. So I figured I'd bring him, and we just walk down the strip. I'm talking about the walkumentary I did Saturday night. I went down at 11.30. So I'd be hitting there, I'd be hitting the whiskey at midnight. Midnight, Saturday night, Sunset Strip. You know why? Because of that damn Motley Crue song. And the new one. Not like a virgin, the other one. The doit. Or the rapper. So apparently a guy can rap over a Motley Crue song or interrupt in a Motley Crue song. People love it. If they cover like a virgin... They hate it. Even though they made the chorus very heavy, I guess it's a lot of non-musicians hearing it and not getting how, uh, actually, what an incredible arrangement that is. Taking such a poppy, goofy song and making it heavy and mocking the whole virgin thing. But too much for people to take in. All I did is make two comments, and I spent three days arguing with hundreds of people. And they're still attacking me, so I just stopped. <laughs> the internet! So, you know, some people, uh, a guy said, you know, you're on to something, you should go down there and do this every week. I'm like, why? The whole point of that video is to show the scene is dead. It's dead deader than dead because I'm going from 89 to uh, 2019 in 89 it was still flooded and see when I got there I should have said actually in 89 I was walking my girlfriend on a chain leash and she would hand the flyers out because that was the vampire thing so, because you know, at that point, you're trying to figure what can we do to get noticed. If you hand a flyer to somebody, other than a girl, they usually just crumple it up and throw it. And you know, if they're jerks, and then you go, "Thanks, dick," or whatever. So we had to get a gimmick. So I said we should walk our girlfriends on leashes, since the since the singer already did that in the show and the act. He'd walk, because after she turned into a vampire, he had to keep her on a leash. You know, he'd yank her around, and I'd push her, and, you know, it was cool. It was fun. She was a good actress, too, the one, uh, Anna, I think her name was. The other one, she was just his girlfriend, and she was cool because she did it, but the acting wasn't as good, and we couldn't do all the stuff we used to, like the ripping out of the heart and scalping her. We've been there. We ripped her heart out. We scalped the girl. We, uh, of course, uh, slit her throat. Uh, that got a lot of negative publicity, actually, that we were, uh, uh, you know, abuse against women. And then when I put the pictures up, you know, a couple years ago, whoa, everybody went crazy. It's like, man, times have really changed. And so, I've noticed that Motley Crue, and I know I'm talking, but, you know, I've noticed that they have started to backpedal because people, as they start asking questions about, well, it looks like you took advantage of girls, and that there was a lot of sexist stuff going on, and uh, drug addiction, so he's like, well, Nikki, who's 
got to do it because the guy that started the band, the guy that actually had the band name, the band, the songs, the a lot of the ideas for the show was were Mick, and his brother-in-law footed the bill for them to do it. Otherwise, would have never happened. Nikki and Tommy would have never done anything because Nikki didn't know what he was doing. He had good ideas, but he didn't know how to write. Mick did. That's how it. See, but now Nikki can do his own thing. He's 60 years old. He should be able to do something. And so he's spinning it because of the new way the world is. You can't say what you want, what's on your mind because of political correctness, which I hate. Political correctness is evil. It's uh, tyranny with manners. That's what it is. That's a quote by Charlton Heston, another guy we don't have anymore to say things to piss people off. And all we got is Ted Nugent, and he's half insane. He does it for just to, just to piss people off. When Charlton Heston did it, he was actually stating truth. Ted's stating truth mixed with stuff to piss people off, which is fine, but it gets old after a while. Even I don't. Even I'm like, oh, okay, all right, go on. But whatever. Still like old Ted. So I'm not going to go down there and be the new Hugh Hauser of Sunset Strip. If anybody know who Hugh Hauser is, he was a guy in public television that went up and down California, you know, interviewing people off on the street, everywhere. No. And then the Ron Jeremy thing. You know, I put it there. He is. He is stinky. He's wearing the same clothes that he was wearing last year. They're all torn up. His hair's all ratty, and he's walking in a circle talking to himself. You don't tell me the guy's homeless. Then I get a guy putting up a com He's actually a millionaire. Well, apparently he's still got people that are helping him, but he is no millionaire, and if you could smell the guy then you'd know. Whatever his deal is, I really don't care because I never was into that stuff. It was my friend that pointed him out. Dude, that's a, you know, somebody said the wrong name and it took me a while to figure out who he was. All I said is I didn't want to be playing clubs until I was, you know, old. <laughs> I wanted to get out, so I set a time, 30 years old, I got out, went back to college, and then got a career in film. And then that took me, you know, through, <laughs> if I didn't get married the second time, actually the marriage, I don't even remember, to tell you the truth, I can't even whine about it because I don't remember it. It was like, uh, oops, I mean, I was married like eight years, but... The last two I don't remember because the uh, propofol, propofol that they used to keep me in a coma They're after the accident. A lot of people forget I was in an accident 10 years ago this July. And after the accident when I was put in a coma, my dear ex took everything that she could. She didn't know about the guitars, and I'd already taken them back because we'd separate. So guitars were safe. I had cars. Couldn't touch that. The only thing she could touch, unfortunately, was a lot of my DVDs and stuff from, you know, my old recordings. And she says she threw them all in a box, and I took them. I believe her. I just haven't been able to find the box. She did take money, but she didn't know about the other bank accounts I had, so I was safe there. She didn't take that much. She took about like 30 grand. And in the big scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. It really isn't. Especially what I was making back then. That was nothing. Let her have it. And But the thing that pisses me off is I lost the house. So, eh. Why am I saying this? Oh, because people were asking things and saying things after that video. After the sunset strip thing. And only about 60, it's only got about 60-something views. You know, if it got like 500, I might think about going down there once a month. 
but it's only got about 60. About. I ain't going down there. Again, I'm going to, like I said, like when I brought it up to the guy that's going to do the documentary on me, or the biop, or whatever it's called, biopic, he said, don't do it, don't do that again unless I can use some of the footage. I go, of course, he can use anything. He goes, well, let's not do that anymore until we're ready and we go down there and we put this together. And he, because he wants to do this for real, you know, with actors and, you know, renting out either the whiskey or the Roxy or the Troubadour and reenacting things. And my music will be all over it. Nobody else's. And other people will be portraying, like, you know, Janie Lane when I pop him, or Axel when I popped him in the face, or when I got hit in the face by two different people. <laughs> because I was a smart ass. <laughs> it happens. But, so he wants to hire actors, and he's got actors. He, you know, he's a went through film school so he knows all the student film crap and he can get you know stuff so I said okay I'm done I won't do that I just wanted to see what would happen so boop no more and no one's watching these anymore so I'm just doing this I'm like I'm playing guitar tonight I'll put the camera on I'll say some stuff I'll jam a little bit and that's all you get okay so that's it no one's going to comment. I'm going to put this up, but you know how many comments I'll get? None! But thank you for subscribing. I got up to 700. Now I just need to get to 1,000.
later. Subscribe, like, comment! Comment. How's that? Okay, that's it. Later. Hit. Hit subscribe. I'm tired of saying it, but do it. And comment. I'm tired of people not commenting, too. It's like I'm playing to air. Very little air, too. I'm not getting any hits. That's why I'm not wasting the time. Later. I know I'm doing the same thing over and over, but I haven't been able to think anything new because I'm trying to think up, finish the album, which will be done in a couple months, and get that movie done, which is all way more important than this. I'd love to, you know, go through all the different guitars I have, and but they're all on there. I could do it again, but it would take months. So, you're getting stuck with same old song and dance. Really just wanted to come on here and explain the uh, Saturday night down at the Strip, which really not a lot of people saw. So, that ain't gonna happen. I might go back down, but not for a while. And if I do, it's to do help him do stock footage shots for whatever. All right? Subscribe. Have a good night.